Hello, welcome to Dr. Nakamura's lecture series on bridge engineering, number A5. Chapter 6 Girder Bridges. In the girder bridge, the girders resist bending moments and shear forces caused by the design loads. When it is subjected to vertical loads, the sectional forces, bending moment and shear force, occur at an arbitrary section. When an elastic beam is subjected to bending moments, stresses occur in a section and they are proportional to the distance from the neutral axis. The plate girder shows the same stress distribution. As for the RC beam, the concrete only resists compression and the steel reinforcement resists tension. So the stress distribution of concrete is non-linear. The girder bridge is classified into three types by the support conditions. A. Simple girder. The girder is simply supported at both ends and it is a determinate structure. The bending moment is positive on the whole span. B. Continuous girder. The girder is supported at more than three points. It is an indeterminate structure. The bending moment is negative at the intermediate supports. C. Gelber and cantilever girder. Hinges are installed in the continuous girder. Due to these hinges, the Gelba bridge is a determinate structure, and the bending moment is zero at the hinge points. Chapter 7 Plate Girder Bridge The girder bridge made of steel plates is called the plate girder, which is subjected to bending moments. The bending stress is proportional to the distance from the neutral axis. Therefore, it is rational and economical to use the larger amount of materials at the upper and lower edges. This leads to the eye shape, which consists of the upper and lower horizontal plates and the vertical plate. The horizontal plate is called flange, and the vertical plate web. This is the side view of a typical plate girder. This is the view from below. You can see two girders and the RC slab. This is the top view before the slab was installed. The girders were connected with the cross beams. This shows the girders and the construction. You can see the eye section consisting of the upper flange, the web, and the lower flange. This illustrates a typical plate girder bridge. There are three eye girders which are connected by the sway bracing or the cross beam. The web is stiffened with the vertical and horizontal stiffness. A is a side view of a typical plate girder bridge. B is a plan view and C is the cross section. There are four steel eye girders. The flanges resist bending moment and the web resists shear force. The girders are connected by the sway bracing or the cross beam, which distribute the loads among the girders. Lateral forces caused by winds and earthquakes are resisted by the lateral bracing. The slab is the surface of road and connected to the upper flange. A is the upper view, 
B is a side view, and C is a lower view. The main girder has an eye section by welding upper flange 1, web 2, and lower flange 3 together. The girder is usually separated into some blocks because of the transportation limit. The blocks are fabricated at a factory and they are transported to the construction site and jointed together by high tensile bolts. The joint 4 is for the upper flange, 5 for the web, and 6 for the lower flange. The length and weight of a block depends on conditions and restrictions of construction sites. In a typical area in Japan, the limit is about 15 meters and 300 kilonewton. The web is relatively thin steel plate which is likely to buckle. To prevent this, the vertical stiffeners 7 and horizontal stiffeners 8 are welded to the web. The girder is supported at the girder ends and reactions occur. They are resisted by the end stiffeners 9. The girder is supported by bearings for which the sole plate 10 is welded to the lower flange. Calculation of bending stress and shear stress. The influence line analysis is used to find the critical load distribution so that it gives the maximum or minimum sectional forces. The design bending moment M and shear force S uh, must be obtained to determine the size and material of the girder. When the plate girder is subjected to bending moment M and shear force S, the bending stress and the shear stress occur. The minimum compressive bending stress occurs at the upper edge and the maximum tensile bending stress occurs at the lower edge. These stresses can be calculated by 7.1. The shear force is mainly resisted by the web. The shear stress is calculated by 7.2. Design bending moment is the maximum at the center and decreases towards the end supports. The girder sections change along the span corresponding to this design bending moment diagram. In general, the web height is constant, but the flange thickness and the steel grade vary along the span. The resistant bending moment becomes this kind of step figure. This is the design shear force diagram which have maximum and minimum values near the end supports. The web thickness and height is a dominant factor to affect structural performance, economy, and appearance. The web height is usually L over 15 to L over 20, where L is the span length. As the web mainly resists shear force, it can be thin by stress calculation. However, a thin plate is vulnerable to shear buckling. Therefore, the minimum thickness is specified in this table. It gives the different values for no horizontal stiffener, one horizontal stiffener, and two horizontal stiffeners. Vertical and horizontal stiffeners are welded to the web to prevent shear buckling. The interval, distance of stiffeners, of vertical stiffeners must satisfy 7.3. This gives these equations for one horizontal stiffener. 
it depends on the aspect ratio, which is A over B. Exercise 7.4. Let us design the plate girder bridge with a span length of 30 meters. Two steel girders support slab, pavement, and live rails. Please look at the assumed side view and the cross section of the bridge. First, the dead load intensity of a girder per unit length D is calculated like this. Then calculate the design live load. The live load consists of two distributed loads, P1, 10 kN per square meters, and P2, 3.5 kN per square meters. The corresponding intensity of a girder per unit length LP1 and LP2 are calculated. These live loads must apply so that it produces the maximum value to the specified data position. Only the positive area of the influence line is considered. Next, calculate the design bending moment at the span center. The design bending moment are caused by the dead load D the live load LP1 and the live load LP2. The load D and LP2 are applied equally on the full span. The load LP1 is applied at the span center with a length of 10 meters. Using the influence line of bending moment at the span center, Y1, Y2, Area ABE, area DEFGH can be obtained. Then we have MD, MP1, and MP2. We also consider the impact factor I. The design bending moments are obtained like this. and verification of the girder at the span center. The design bending moment is shown here. The girder at the span center is verified for the limit state 3. This is the assumed girder section. The yield strength of steel is assumed 355 newton per square millimeters. We need sectional properties which are calculated in this way. Then we can calculate bending stresses, which is the maximum and minimum at the lower and upper edges of the flanges. The limit values are obtained by this formula. Design stress is within the limit value and satisfies limit state 3. 7.3 Connection of Members The girder consists of steel plates which are connected by welding or high tensile bolts. Welding is mainly used to fabricate the girder at factories. The steel blocks are commonly jointed at the construction site by high tensile bolts. In recent years, steel blocks are jointed at site by welding in some cases. 7.3.1 Welding Connection There are two kinds of welding, groove welding and fillet welding. As for the groove welding, the end faces of the two plates are cut as the V or X shape and melted metals are poured to the gap of these plate ends. 
Flanges are welded by the groove welding, which transfers the axial forces. As for the fillet welding, melted metal is poured to the corner of the two plates. The web and flange are welded by the fillet welding, which transfers the shear force. Suppose the groove welding is subjected to axial force. It is judged not to exceed the limit state 1 when the equation 7.9 is satisfied. This equation means that the welding does not yield, stays elastic, and satisfies the limit state 1. The effective thickness A is a plate thickness. Suppose the groove welding is subjected to axial force. It is judged not to exceed the limit state 1 when the equation 7.9 is satisfied. This equation means that the welding does not yield, stays elastic, and satisfies the limit state 1. The effective thickness A is a plate thickness. When the fillet welding is subjected to shear force, it is judged not to exceed the limit state 1 when the equation 7.10 is satisfied. The effective thickness A is a leg length, which is the diagonal length of welding size S. When the fillet welding is subjected to shear force, it is judged not to exceed the limit state 1 when the equation 7.10 is satisfied. The effective thickness A is a leg length, which is the diagonal length of welding size S. Exercise 7.1 Verification of Groove Welding Suppose the groove welded part is subjected to the axial tension due to the dead load and live load, PD and PL. Verify this welded part satisfies the limit state 1. Note that yield strength of steel is 235 Nm per square millimeters. Effective thickness A equal 19 millimeters. Effective length L equal 300 millimeters. PD equal 200 and PL equal 100 kilonewton. The stress at the welded part is calculated like this. The limit value becomes like this. The yield stress of the welded part is the same as that of the mother plate. The stress is within the limit value, so it satisfies the limit state 1. Exercise 7.2 Verification of Fillet Welding The vertical steel plate is fillet welded to the horizontal steel plate, as shown in this figure. Suppose the fillet welded part is subjected to the shear force due to dead loads and live loads, PD and PL. Verify that the fillet welded part satisfies the limit state 1. Note that the yield shear strength of steel is 135 newton per square millimeters. Fillet weld size S equal 12 millimeters. Effective length L equal 300 millimeters. PD equal 200 and PL equal 100 kilo newton. The effective weld thickness A is found like this. The shear stress is obtained by this equation. The limit value becomes like this. The shear strength of the welded part is the same as that of the mother plate. The shear stress is within the limit value and it satisfies the limit state 1. 
connection with high tensile friction bolts. To connect the steel plates with bolts, as shown here, the mother plates are covered by the connection plates, and then the mother and connection plates are jointed by high tensile bolts. The bolts are fastened and the tension is introduced, which causes friction between these plates. When this connection is subjected to tension P, it is resisted by the friction. This is a mechanism of the connection with high tensile friction bolts. The tensile strength of bolts is 1000 to uh, 1200 megapascal. For the plate girder bridge, the upper and lower flanges and the web are separately connected. There are different types of joints, overlap joint, face-to-face -face joint. The number of friction planes depends on the joint type. Single friction plane for A and B, two friction planes for C. Slip is very small between the mother and connection plates, fastened by high tensile friction bolts. This connection has high rigidity. After a slip occurs, the relative displacement becomes large and the bolts touch the mother plate, causing the bearing condition. And finally, either the bolts or the mother plates fails. The limit state 1 is defined as the occurrence of the slip and verified by equation 7.13. In the left side, it is assumed that the nominal stress equally distributes among the bolts. The right side depends on the number of friction planes, slip strength of a bolt, resistance factor, and modeling and analysis factors. Exercise 7.3 Verification of high tensile friction bolt connection. The flange is connected by 16 high tensile friction bolts. The connection is subjected to the tensile force due to the dead load and the live load PD and PL. Verify this connection, satisfy the limit state 1. Note that the bolt diameter is M22, bolt material F10T. Slip strength of a bolt with a friction plane 82 kN, PD 800 and PL 500 kN. The design bolt force is the factored dead and live load forces divided by the total number of bolts. The limit value is the slip strength of a bolt multiplied by the number of friction planes, resistance factor, and the modeling and analysis factors. The design bolt force is within the limit value, so it satisfies the limit state 1. That's all for this lecture. See you next lecture.